Welcome to this YSL tutorial. In this session we're going to teach you all about how to use tables in Microsoft SQL Server reporting services. What we'll cover in this session are all the basics of using a table in a report. We'll show you how to add a table to a report, how to select the various fields you want to use in the table, we'll talk about basic table formatting and also how to insert and merge cells, rows and columns. Once we've covered those topics, we'll move on to some of the more advanced features of tables, including how to sort the results in a table and add interactive sorting on a table. We'll show you how to add filters to a table to, re to, to affect the results returned. And finally, how to repeat the column headings on each page of a report. So let's get started. When you're displaying data from a data set in a reporting services report, there are several ways you can do it, but the most common and simple is to use a basic table. So this little session is going to teach you how to use a table in a new report in reporting services. Let's start by adding a new item, which will be a report. I'm going to call it a number four uh, table of films. And add that report to my project. This report is going to use one of our shared data sets, which if you've seen our previous video, you'll know how to create by now, but I'm going to refer to my shared data set, uh, DTS Films. So I'm going to right click the data sets folder in the report data window, choose to add a data set, and simply point to the one that I created earlier on. I'll give it a sensible name here as well, uh, Shared Films. Click OK. So at this point I have these three field names, these three column names from my underlying film table containing the information about the name, release date and running time in minutes. If I want to display that information against all of the films in the underlying database, I need to use either one of three different types of items. There are three types of items referred to as generically the tablix items. It's a horrible word, but it's made up of a combination of the table, list and matrix. So you put them all three together, it's a tablix. We're going to start with using simple tables in this example. So I'm going to start by double clicking the table report item, which has a simple three column table to my list. The next job is to add some columns from one of the data sets into this table. So I can do that in several ways. If I want to, I can use hover the mouse over any cell in the data row and I get the, the, the field selector button. If I click onto that button, it provides me the list of the fields in the data set. If I select film name, I get two items in there now. Uh, the set in square brackets, the film name in square brackets refers to the actual field. Then in the header row, it displays the uh, the column name. And really cunningly, it actually recognizes what a, what's called camel case. So where you capitalize the first letter of each word. Reporting services will automatically put a space between the words. I think it's quite clever. Um, if you didn't want to use the field selector button, although I think that's by far and away the easiest way, you can also drag fields directly into the table. You'll see the column gets highlighted in blue when, uh, when you have a, a field in the correct position. And at that point, I could preview my report to see what the results look like. So there we go, there's a bit of tidying up to do. We'd want to make sure that our columns are the correct width, uh, deal with the, the slightly poor date formatting, um, and then maybe change the column headings as well. So that's the next job. To change anything about the design of the table then, such as changing the column widths and date formats, we'll need to head back to the design view. At this point, we can then start making changes. Now, if I want to change the uh, the column widths, unfortunately, if you're familiar with uh, with applications like Microsoft Excel, you can't simply hover the mouse in between two columns or column headers and double click as you'd expect to. It doesn't work in reporting services. Until the report is running, it's got no way to predict how wide the column needs to be. So unfortunately, it's a case of clicking and dragging manually to increase or decrease the column widths. But that's fairly straightforward. To change formatting of anything in a the table, then you'll first of all need to select the appropriate part. If I want to change the uh, the formatting of my uh, film's release date, I'll need to make sure that I've selected the cell containing the release date. Now it's really easy to get this wrong. If you click onto the piece of text, it doesn't actually select the cell. It's like simply the text inside it. 
to in, in order to select the cell itself make sure you click into a blank part of the cell so use the northwest uh, arrow cursor you'll see that the cell is selected with a thick gray border that appears around it once you've got that selected you can either um, use the properties window in the bottom right hand corner or if you prefer right click into the cell and choose text box properties the dialog box that appears then provides you with a list of different tabs that like to fill uh, or change various formatting options of the cell. If I find the number option on the left hand side, that will allow me to choose a slightly better date format. I'm going to go with a, a fairly short, uh, actually I'll go with this, uh, this fairly bog standard uh, day, month, year style. If I choose OK, I'll then have that date formatted. If I want to change any text in a cell, like I want to change any of the, uh, the, the column headings for my table, then I can use the text cursor to select the text and overtype it. I'll call this film duration rather than film runtime in minutes. It's a little bit of a shorter title. And do the same thing with release date. And delete some of the text. And I think film name is fine. If I want to change background colors and font colors, that's relatively straightforward as well. But I probably want to do that for an entire row of data rather than just a single cell. So to select more than one cell at a time, I can start with the mouse in a blank part of one cell and then click and drag across using the mouse. Alternatively, I can click into any cell in the table first and then use the little grey selectors on the left hand side. If I click just to the left of where it says film name, that will highlight the entire row. So background colours that I change using the, the background colour tool will affect all of the cells on that row. And do a quick bit of basic formatting as well to the font. So at that point I've modified the uh, background colors and font formatting of the cell and I've changed the number format of the cell and changed the column widths. Now that I've made those formatting changes, it's probably a good idea to preview the report to make sure it looks sensible. And you should be able to see now that formatting changes have taken place. The next thing I'd like to do is, is add a banner heading that spans the width of the table uh, to describe it. And that involves doing several things. First of all, this bit isn't actually necessary, but I'm going to move the table down my report so that I have a bit of extra space at the top. In order to do that, I need to select any single cell in the table first. Then I need to click on this little grey square in the top left hand corner in order to expose the selection handles, the resizing handles and the move cursor. If I click and drag on the move icon, I can move the entire table in one go. The next thing I need to do is insert a row above the top row of the table. To do that I need to click into any single cell in the table first and I can then right click at the left hand side on one of the grey boxes and choose an insert a row either above or below, in this case above. The new row that appears will have the same formatting as the row below it. What I want to do now is to merge those three cells so they become one. It's having a little bit of trouble there. If I click away from the table first, click and hold the mouse button in the first cell and then drag the mouse across that row. Once I have all three cells selected, I can right click into any one of them and choose to merge cells. If I then center the text using the center button on the toolbar, any titles that I type in now. spell it correctly, we sent it across the entire width of the table. But I'm just going to move that table back up to the top of the list again and preview it one more time. So this time we have a big banner heading that spans the entire table. You can sort the results of a table in one of two ways. First of all you might have applied a sorting or an order by clause to the query that underlies your data set. But if you haven't, or if you want to change the sort for a particular report or table, you can actually add a sorting level to the table itself. In order to do that, click somewhere inside the table into one of the cells, and then identify the blank grey square in the top left hand corner. Click with the right mouse button onto that square, 
and choose the option called Tablix Properties. Remember Tablix is that horrible word made up of table, list and matrix. If you select that option you'll expose the Tablix Properties dialog box and there are lots and lots of options on here. To begin with we're just going to head straight to the Sorting tab. I can add a sort to my table and I'm going to choose a sort this time in ascending order of film's release date. So I select the drop down arrow here and choose film release date. Uh, I can change the order A to Z or Z to A. I'm going to use it, uh, leave it as A to Z at this point. Choose OK. And when I preview my results, although originally my table was sorted, my, my data set is sorted in alphabetical order of film name, now that I've applied a sort to the table, it's overridden that and is sorted in release date order. It can be more useful to the end user to allow them to choose how to sort the table while the report is running. And you can do that by adding interactive sorting to the column headers. So we'll add interactive sorting to the film name, release date and film duration column headers to sort by the appropriate columns in the table. To do that, head back to the design view and then identify and select the cell that you would like your user to be able to click on to sort the table. So if I identified the film name column heading, I can then right click onto that cell and choose text box properties. There's a tab uh, on the left hand side of the dialog box that appears called interactive sorting. If I select that option, the option that I need to choose first of all, hopefully obviously, is the enable interactive sorting option. We're going to sort the detail rows. The detail rows, by the way, are those identified by the, uh, the, the three dash symbols, the three lines there. And we're going to use this cell, the film name heading, to sort the table by film name. Slightly confusingly, we could let the user click onto the film name heading and sort the table by running time in minutes or release date, but that's not particularly sensible. So let's stick with the film name. Choose OK. And then just to show you how that one works, head back to the preview tab and you should find that the film name heading now has a little uh, up and down arrow. If I click onto that symbol, it'll first of all sort in ascending order of film name and then in the arrow again we'll sort in descending order and so on. If I head back to the design view, I can do exactly the same thing then with the release date and text box properties, interactive sorting, enable, sort by film release date, and likewise with film duration. And once you have all three done, when you preview the report, your user can choose to sort by any column they wish simply by clicking one of the buttons. As well as sorting the results in a table, you can also add filters to limit the results that are displayed. Now, again, there are two ways to do that. Just like with sorting, you can apply filters to the underlying data source, either in the query or actually in this case, by right clicking the name of the data set and choosing data set properties. The filters tab on the left hand side of the dialog box allows you to add filters which will limit the results that are displayed. If you do this in the data set, then all tables based on that data set are affected by the filter. So it might be more useful if I cancel out of this dialog box to apply the filters directly to the table. If I click into any single cell in the table again, I can then right click at the top left hand corner and choose Tablix Properties. The separate filters tab now in the Tablix Properties dialog box allows me to filter just the results in this single table. I'm going to start by showing um, films whose running time in minutes is longer than 100, let's say. So in order to do that, hit the Add button first of all, and then you build your filter using the sequence of drop-down lists. So I can choose Film Runtime Minutes. The operator here is, is a fairly standard list of, of basic operators. I'm going to use the greater than or equal to operator this time. And the value I'm interested in is the value 100. If I choose OK, and then preview the report. I'll be able to see, in fact, if I sort my table, I should be able to see that the smallest number, smallest running time in minutes now is 100 minutes. 
I can add further filters as well simply by going back to the design view and selecting a cell in the table right clicking at the top left hand corner and choosing Tablix properties again back on the filters tab I can simply add another filter and this time I'm going to look for films where their release date is between two dates so in films that were released between uh, the 1st of January 2000 and the 31st of December oops try that again 31st of December 2000 so that will be a combination that will show me a combination of films whose running time is longer than 100 minutes and that were released in the year 2000 if I select OK and preview the results again I should see a much shorter list of films this time removing a filter is just as straightforward as creating them to do it head back to the design view find and select the tablix properties option and on the filters tab you can simply click into each of the uh, the filters you've added and choose to delete them and when you choose OK all of the filters from that table will have gone the final thing we'll talk to you about in this tutorial is how you can get your table headers to appear on each page of the report you can see that if I navigate to page 2 or further that the header row doesn't appear on any of the extra pages of the report it's only ever on the first page getting these header rows to appear on each page of the report is actually a little bit more tricky than it first appears so let me talk you through how it works head back to the design view first of all I'm going to show you a, a, a little option that, that confuses a few people including myself when I first encountered it um, to stop you going down the same same route that I did if you find and select the tablet property dialog box there is an option on the general tab that sounds like it does exactly what we want it to do repeat header rows on each page if I check that box and choose OK unfortunately when I preview the report the effect I wanted hasn't taken place the header rows still only appear on the very first page of the report so ignoring what that option is actually for in the first place I want to show you how you can get the header rows to appear first of all I'm going to remove that option that I've just selected to make sure that that's not interfering with what we're about to do and then I'm going to introduce you to the row groups panel down at the bottom of the screen you might find it useful at this point to select and click and drag that panel upwards to give yourself a bit more space now what the row groups panel does at this point is it shows you items contained in the table can you see this details item with a dash 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 symbol if you click onto that symbol it actually selects the details row in the table itself you can see the same dash 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 symbol I want to be able to select the two header rows uh, which are referred to as static rows but in order to see them I first of all need to switch the groups panel into advanced mode so I can do that by clicking on the drop down arrow and then choosing advanced mode and you'll then see that in, this, in the row groups panel I get two extra items, two static items each of which refers to one of the rows in the top table you see I also get three columns as well each one of these columns refers to one of the columns in the table but I'm focusing on these uh, these groups, these static rows if I want these rows to appear at the top of each page it's important to select them one by one you can't do this to multiple items you have to select the static items one by one and then use the properties window over at the right hand side of the screen the property you're looking for should be down uh, towards the bottom of the list and it's called repeat on new page if you simply change repeat on new page from false to true and I can do the same thing then with a second static item repeat on new page make that true instead of false this time when I preview my report I should find that instead of just having the row headers at the top of the first page they now appear on each page of the report 
If you've enjoyed this training video, you can find many more online training resources at www.wiseowl.co.uk.